An old-fashioned combination bike lock has three numbered wheels side by side on a steel cylinder. Each wheel has the digit 0 to 9 on them. The combination consists of a three-digit integer such as 1, 2, 3. How many combinations are possible by choosing a digit from each wheel? In order to locate a repeat digit such as 1, 1, 1. Right, so let me kind of draw a little picture of this, just to have a visual aid. You know, you remember these kind of old bike locks with the cylinders? They had like wheels and the wheels would have dials on them. So, you know, something like this. You know, and then you have the end of the lock here. And you know, the chain would connect to that, you know, on both ends. So I know it's a very terrible drawing, but basically what I'm trying to illustrate is, you know, Uh, the wheels had numbers on them, and you would turn the wheels, you know, to the proper combination, and then the bike lock would open. So that was the old-fashioned combination locks. I put the combinations in quotes, right, because I wanted to kind of hint that it's not a combination, in fact. So first of all, let me read the keywords here, underline the keywords. It says, how many combinations are possible by choosing a digit from each wheel? So when it says how many, you want to be thinking of combinations. This is a, not a combination, sorry, but combinatorics. In other words, a counting question. So you're trying to think of... Um, how many different possible ways something can be done. You're usually thinking of one of the counting techniques that you would have learned in your course. Now, I know that you might have learned different counting techniques in your course, but I'm going to basically teach you to think of just two primarily at first. You should consider either the fundamental counting rule, or you, can, you should consider combinations. And what we're going to try to do probably is by process of elimination, um, get rid of combinations whenever we can. Because, you know, many times combinations is the appropriate choice, but there are ways to figure out when it's definitely not appropriate. Um, here's one thing that will stop us from using combination right away. It says, note, it's okay to repeat digits such as 111. And that's not possible in a combination lock, I mean in a combination problem. In a regular combination problem, if you use the number 1, you can't use it again. So there's no way you could have a combination if it was a truly combination lock, the way we think of combination in combinatorics, um, you would not be able to use 111. Try to think of, for example, the lottery problems where they, you know, suck those ping pong balls up into the chamber to get the lottery numbers. There's only one ball of each number in, in the chamber, and so when they suck, say, the number six up into the, the chamber, that's it. Six can't be reused again. There will be no other six that comes up in the number because there's only one six, and if it's been chosen, it's been chosen. It can't be chosen again. So that's one way to eliminate combinations. The other issue is that combinations require that order isn't necessary or doesn't matter. So say your lock combination was 1, 2, 3. Does that mean it could come to this lock and put in 3, 2, 1 and the, and the lock would open? The answer is no, it, it doesn't work that way. If your combination was 1, 2, 3, if you remember from these old locks, you had to make sure that you used 1, 2, 3 in that order. You couldn't use, for example, 2, 3, 1 or, you know, one, three, two, that doesn't work. It had to be in the order that you specified, one, two, three. If you didn't put it in that order, the bike locks wouldn't open. So that's another sign that it's not a combination because that would imply that order is important and in combinations, order is never important. Okay, good. So we know it's not a combination. So then we're gonna think fundamental counting rule. And if you think that, you think correctly. For fundamental counting rule, you have to start out by saying, how many decisions do I have to make? And in this case, we have to pick three digits, right? So there are three decisions to make. What digit to use for the first wheel, what digit for the second, one digit for the third. So there are three decisions to make. We better put three spaces then to hold the number of options for each decision. All right, the next thing is to put in the number of options possible for each decision. So when I come to that wheel, that first wheel on the dial, how many numbers are available to me? Well, the numbers are 0 to 9 on every wheel. That's 10 digits, actually. 1 to 9 is 9. The 0 makes the 10th digit. There are 10 different options for the first wheel. When you go to the second wheel, again, you can reuse the digit you used before. You're allowed to, so there's still 10 different values available. And on the third and final wheel, again, you have 10 ways to fulfill that choice. You can have 10 different options to fill it. And so when you're done, you just multiply these out, and your answer will become... 10 times 10 is 100, times 10, of course, is 1,000. There are 1,000 unique combinations that you could use on a lock of this type.